It wasn't my worst day at school, but pretty close. It all started first thing this morning. Everyone was signing a birthday card for one of our classmates, Lucas. He just got home from being at the hospital for cancer treatments. No thanks, I'm a Jehovah's Witness and I don't celebrate birthdays. What? Can you think about it? The thing is, I did want to sign the card. Lucas was one of the nicest people in my class. Maybe I can just sign it. I mean, it's not like I'm going to a birthday party. Hey, little man. How you doing? Yeah? Mom said you were like, today? When Dad came in, I told him everything that happened. I know from the Bible that it's wrong to celebrate birthdays, but is signing the card really a big deal? Dad said my question was a good one. Then he showed me a scripture. Can you get your Bible for me? Let's look at Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5.10. Keep on making sure of what is acceptable to the Lord. He said we all have to keep making sure of what's acceptable to Jehovah because Satan is a master at tricking us. I know birthdays are wrong because the Bible teaches that they are not approved by Jehovah. So Dad said, it's always good to ask, how would Jehovah feel if I do this? I still didn't sign the card, but I'm gonna do something else for Lucas. How you been feeling? A little better. And then I realized something. Instead of celebrating one day, I could share with Lucas our hope of living forever on a beautiful paradise earth. No sickness ever again. We have received your test results. I wish I had better news. It's okay, go ahead. We have to operate. All right, but remember, no blood. I will do my best, but your best option is a blood transfusion. Without it, your chances are much lower. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I understand. And thank you, doctor, for doing your best and leaving this choice to me. My stand is the same. Very well. We'll schedule the surgery for the end of this week. And uh, we have to run a few more tests this afternoon. But I will give you a few minutes first. Thank you. Should something happen, keep your hope anchored on that wonderful day. The day when your mom and I will be reunited with you in the new world. Caleb, who likes magic? Jehovah or Satan? Satan. Right. Magic is bad. That's why Jehovah hates it. Do you really want to play with something that Jehovah hates? Do you remember who we learned about at family worship? Who is this? Adam and Eve. Right. Did they obey Jehovah? No, they disobeyed Jehovah. And he got very sad. So what if you disobey Jehovah and play with toys he doesn't like? Do you think Jehovah will be happy or sad? Sad. Yeah. Do you want Jehovah to be sad? No! I don't want Jehovah to be sad with me. No, I don't want Jehovah to be sad with you either. So what do you think you should do with this toy?
Caleb, I am so proud of you. You made Mommy very happy. And you know who else is happy? Jehovah. Yes. Jehovah loves you very much for obeying him, Caleb. Where are the dead? Would you wish that question answered according to man's theory? Ought to have the answers pointed out in the Bible. You will say a man's answer would be only a gasp. And yet there is no truth more clearly taught in the Bible than that of the resurrection of the dead. If the dead are to live again, then they must be resurrected and God has provided that there shall be a resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a guarantee that all who have died must be awakened out of death and given a knowledge of the truth. All mankind were born in sin, and the death of the perfect man Jesus provided the purchase price for the right of man to live again, and in due time Jesus will awaken them out of death. All of the dead in God's due time shall be awakened out of death, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. The resurrection will bring boundless joy to those who obey God under Christ's kingdom. The obedient ones on earth during the reign of Christ will be given everlasting life on the earth in complete happiness and joy. Jehovah's way is always right and true. Learn that way and live. Your parents must be really proud of you. Well, my moms are both really proud of me. I was raised by two wonderful women. You know, life partners. Oh, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, my assistant Marty, I recently found out that he's gay. You say that like there's something wrong with it. Do you have a problem? Tess, don't do this. Why? There's nothing wrong with being gay. Tess, we live by the Bible's moral standards, but we don't force our beliefs on other people, and we don't judge anyone either. But you do think being gay is wrong. Eric, remember where we're at. Well, we believe there are standards of right and wrong that we should live by. And God's word says that sex is meant to be between a man and a woman who are married to each other. Look, I don't mean to be rude, sir, but the world has changed. Honey, maybe we're being too harsh on gays. Some people just seem to be programmed that way. Look, I know not everyone agrees with us, but we all have free will. And God lets us choose to live by His standards or not. If we go against His standards, we end up hurting ourselves. He just wants what's best for us. Anna, what about you? Do you agree with your father? Well... You know, we actually have another project due tomorrow. It's probably best that we get going. Wait, at least let me walk you guys outside. So this is our Anna's association. <sighs> They're just kids. Kids talk like they know everything. Our Anna believes them. There's someone I'm interested in. Interested in? Someone I'd like to date. You're, you're only 17. I'm turning 18 the next month. That's not the point. What is the point? You know how your mom and I feel about you even thinking about dating so young. Who are we talking about? Zach. Zach Tanner? 
Dad, if this is about him not being baptized. Whoa, yes, this yes, is exactly is. about him not being baptized. And even if he was, you're both still too young. We're not that young. We're graduating soon. Liz, neither one of you is ready for marriage right now. Can you honestly see Zach as being your spiritual head? It's just, when I see other girls with their boyfriends, I want that too. Liz, we understand. But Zach hasn't even taken the first step towards baptism yet. Neither one of you are ready for dating. I'm sorry, but there's no way your mom and I can approve of this. Well, we're going to go to the Northern Estates and then, okay. hey, hey, Kevin, do you want to join us? We're going up to the Northern He said he had the weekend shift again, but that the people there have their paradise and they don't listen anyway. The car's over here. And when we do public witnessing. Hey, Kevin, we've been having great experiences out there at Turner Street. Yeah, that sounds nice. Yeah, that's by your job. Do you get to talk to your coworkers about it? He said it wasn't a good idea to make waves at the store. For as much as we've all tried to help Kevin, he let his fear of man go unresolved. Proverbs says, trembling at men is a snare. If Kevin couldn't preach with boldness during favorable times, imagine how much harder it was for him to loyally rely on Jehovah during this difficult time. Yeah, now, during the Great Tribulation, Shut the basement. Shut that door. 